world of how the game should be played and and you know the experience with soccer um you know soccer players in the states especially division three level you know they don't have necessarily the discipline or the I'll just say the soccer IQ to play that way, and I and I and I fully fully understand that. But the teams that focus in on that attribute more so than anything else are inc- so much better than than teams that don't. Like it's just remarkable, just remarkable, and they dictate. They step out in the field. You know, step on the field against any opponent, and you're reacting to it. And it's really hard for a team at this level to go 90 minutes and be so disciplined where they can't, they won't be broken down. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. It takes uh, a lot of um, like bravery to do that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You know, like the top, the top teams. I, I think like you know the elite, like 10 or 12 programs that realistically are, are you know are thinking about national yep. championships. I think are the ones that can dictate the game are very good technically, yep. but then, you know, they can also, they can also deal with the athleticism yeah. of, of very, very good direct yeah. athletic teams as yeah, well. Yeah. So I think ability to kind of manage uh, a variety of opponents in terms yeah. of their athleticism, in terms of their ability on the ball and keeping possession. And yeah. um, I, I think the teams that can do that are the realistically, the teams that are, I think, you know, kind of the elite, of the D3s. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I totally, I totally agree. Totally agree. And there's, yeah, and you're right. It's probably, I think it does come to 10, maybe 15. And then I think it, yeah. I don't want to say there's a drop off, but I, I do think it's a, it's a question more of managing a game than it is about technical ability, speed, all that kind of stuff. I just think it's those elite teams have an, have an ability to manage a game much better than, than teams that are, like I said, you know, 15 on down. So yeah. and, and confidence. I mean, it's a yeah. confidence thing, too. Oh, it's yeah. like uh, just kind of, um, you know, uh, whether it's leadership within your team or with your coaches yeah. or, you know, from, from your older players or wh- whatever, there, there's a uh, – you kind of have an, an aura or kind of a confidence yeah. about you. you. You know, no matter what happens in this game, yep. we're going to be able to uh, manage it. So yeah, I think yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's a big part of you know, yeah. it's so, so difficult to crack into that, that top group and being there. And then, you know, it's like climbing the mountain is a lot easier than, than staying on the mountain, yeah. so to speak. So. Well, you forget too, right? Like I've just been watching and talking to coaches and I'm, I'm sure your experience bears itself out from where you started to where you want to get to isn't a one year, two year proposition, right? I think we get fooled in thinking, you know, a new head coach, you know, Pep Guardiola steps into Man City and then within six months he has him playing exactly the way they want him to play and he has the players he needs and all that stuff. And truth of the matter is, is that Division Three at a collegiate program, it's just that that's not the way it is, right? Like, I talk to guys who are like, I'm on year seven of a, of trying to get to a spot where I got the right players and again, sort of building the right culture. It's a lot more complicated than, than, you know, than I think we get give yeah. credit for. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it certainly, it certainly kind of takes time. I think, um, yeah. you know, the, the programs that, you know, trust and, and believe in their, their staff and keep are able to retain coaches uh, yeah. with so much constant change. And, you know, it, it, even, even a coach has been around for a long time. Like those players haven't been there as long as maybe a yeah. uh, tenure type coach. So yeah. uh, every year you are, you're having to teach and, and kind of, it helps certainly helps the longer you've been around and, you know, older mm-hmm. players, but uh, every, every, every team and every group is going to be uh, look a little bit different. Yeah, so yeah. I think a strong foundation, yeah. Uh, uh, and kind of in terms of your values and everything else yeah. uh, that takes time to kind of uh, oh, establish totally your... totally and it's so quick to again other conversations i've had of just coaches with experience that that they've spent years building and then it takes one season <laughs> to to totally derail it and have to restart that process all over again because you're dealing with yeah. all i mean it's in a good way right like you're dealing with 17 18 19 20 21 year old kids 
who, you know, think they're on top of the world and what do they know? And they, they know more than you. And it just, it's very easy for that to happen, you know? And yeah. I don't, I don't know how to deal with that, right? Like, I don't know how to deal with that. Wow. Uh, it, like, in a lot of ways, it's kind of scary to think about, like, yeah. you know, your entire kind of livelihood uh, kind of rests on sometimes the decisions of, you know, 20-year-olds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Very it, true. It, it, well, yeah. And so, so I think, I think it's, uh, it's, it's uh, that just places so much more of importance in terms of uh, the type of the type of people that you kind of allow into your family and recruit yeah. and bring in and. Um, yeah. and the values that you kind of retain and carp on, every, you know, day in and day out with your with your teams. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, interesting. Well, we'll keep talking about that. But why, why don't we just jump right into it? I'll um I'll just give you some some quick sort of background or thoughts on on how this works. So this is pretty straightforward. There are no rules. You say you go where you want to go. I, I let it happen, and probably I'll enjoy that more than um, um, than normal. So, um, and then um, it, it, the only thing I would ask is at the end if you could just sort of hang on when when we um, when when at some point I'll turn off the recording. Just don't jump off until I sort of give you a thumbs up because of the way this software works and I'm trying something different for because, you know, my fans demand better, better quality video. And so I'm trying these different things to to get the quality to improve. So it takes a little bit longer to upload. So. Yeah, you just, I'm sure you're like your tech team, and uh, yeah. I, mean, I think I think it's Jackie leading the uh, leading yeah. the charge behind the scenes. So yeah. I think of it's course uh, there she is. She's like, yeah. it, I, you know, this better work or else you're fired. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then my chief marketing officer, you know, my tre- chief strategy officer, and then my chief complaining officer. I mean, they're on me. Like they're like, this has got to get better. Never yeah. ends. It never ends. <laughs> so, all right. So why don't we just roll into this? I'm I'm actually because I enjoyed that first five minutes of that conversation. I wish I yeah. got it from the very beginning. I, I think I'm just going to let this whole thing go. So if you're okay sure. with that, maybe yeah. just to jump in from a starting point, maybe you could just you know I I know you've been the head coach I think since 2017 at at Emory. Um, you know. Sort of, how did you end up there, and what's your journey been like through soccer? I'm sure you have some. If you're like every other D3 coach that I've talked to, you probably have some interesting twists and turns throughout the way. So yeah, no, no, I I, uh, I appreciate it. Certainly, it's uh, I, I think it's a little bit different from maybe many. I uh, you know I finished I finished playing at uh, I played at BCU Virginia Commonwealth in in, mm-hmm. in Virginia, um, so I have a little bit of a D1 kind of college experience. Uh, after that, I kind of bounced around. At that time, it was uh, the A League. Um, now oh, it's like yeah. US, USL one, but um, mm-hmm. did that for a little bit. Spent a little time in Germany, uh, tried to get a visa. You know, a few trials. Uh, quickly realized I wasn't quite good enough as a player, so uh, I came back. And uh, when I moved back, I kind of lived with my folks. I got a regular job. I was working on a golf course, and uh, I ended up helping out my dad uh, with a with the club team as as you know, just kind of like a volunteer, just kind of an assistant coach, mm-hmm. and kind of got into it my dad had coached me growing up and uh, was a pretty well known coach i would say in virginia in the kind of the 90s um and uh yeah so that was kind of the, the start i you know during that time i kind of got went through all my coaching courses and licensing and uh was lucky enough to kind of get a, a full-time staff staff job with with that club soccer uh, mm-hmm. in charlottesville um mm-hmm. And so I spent, you know, I was there for probably eight or nine years and kind of started out as a staff coach and kind of uh, worked my way up as a, uh, ultimately as like the technical director. So um, that was kind of my, my path. And I think there's a lot of guys in the college game that kind of goes straight into, straight into as a grad assistant or straight into mm-hmm. kind of the college route. So uh, it's very, very difficult, I would say, to kind of crack into the college game from, from club. So I was very, very fortunate. Uh, I knew the head coach at Emory at the time um, from Virginia. He had been at Virginia Westland um, as a as a coach for for like twenty or thirty years. So he had been around for for a really long time. I've known him really well, and uh, he, I, I went to Emory as an assistant coach in twenty thirteen. Um, 
and that was totally unique you know at the time it was kind of like i might i might love it i might hate it but i, I you know that route i want to i want to i want to try and, and and just mm-hmm. kind of see what uh you know coaching college is all about so uh, been here ever since i love it i love the ability to really focus with with just one team and try to make them as good as possible and um mm. you know so from that aspect it uh, uh you know i've i've loved it so um so you went to germany and maybe for everyone out there you can sort of um because i've made comments because I, I went to spain um it's not so easy, is it, to try to get in there and then to realize, holy smokes, as good as I thought I was, I am not as good as I th- am. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and you know, I don't, I don't speak German, so that certainly made it uh, made a lot <laughs> yeah. more difficult. In some ways, when you're there, uh, you know, just just trying to figure out the game and like looking around at your teammates, aren't you know? Okay, we're playing two touch. I got that part. Like, you know, it's yeah. uh, it's it's certainly. Uh, as a you know, 21 year old kid, not speaking the language, it was certainly shifting. Like you know, I, I quickly realized, and you kind of grow up really quickly uh, when you're trying to uh, kind of grind your teeth and, and kind of make a living at it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at least you got a chance. I would say, go. Oh, everybody should go, and and you know, if not, it's not the path. That's fine. But they should definitely because it's a different atmosphere, different world, and how they treat you know. And how how that world lives, right? So, um, hey, so so I I was meaning to ask because when because when we started to connect, I, you know, you know, Emery's not a, you know, it's not a light academic school, um, you know, you the the rigor uh, Emery is you know one of the tops. Like what? Like, how does that play into re- your recruiting process? Like, in, in the players you bring in, and and you know, does that do you feel limited because of I'm sure the academic standards that aren't lowered for you, <laughs> like because you're the soccer coach? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, it's it certainly presents uh, some challenges. It limits maybe the player pool from a lot of uh, you know maybe some other programs. Uh, obviously, when you, you know. One of the first things I do if I'm like at a new field or a new thing or a new player that, you know, sends me like the first thing I'm looking at is going to be their academics, even before I identify anything about them as, mm-hmm. uh, as a soccer player. So it's, uh, it's it certainly can be limiting. And, and in some ways, I think it's um, because of the high academic kind of uh, rigor and nature and challenge. I, I think there there's a certain segment and niche of kid that wants that and is looking for that. Um, and so I think a lot of times kind of like the, the interest of the school, like I, I get a lot of emails from kids that are interested because, because of that. So, whereas mm-hmm. maybe, uh, maybe a, another school, I might not get as much kind of self-interest from just from the outside, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's, kind of, um, it's kind of a dream school. It's like similar. I'm sure a lot of, uh, you know, all the other UA schools, I'm sure NESCAC schools and, you know, Ivy league type schools, um, are you know a lot of these kids are already kind of self-driven and, and already kind of know the challenge, the rigor, and they're they're up for it. They yeah. want that. Don't want that experience. I, I I also say that probably the like you mentioned the first sort of going through this with my with simple player number two, where I mean it's the right way at any at any level or any sort of entry point, but where his approach to soccer is through the academics and if if whatever his academic interests are and the quality leads him that to that school and then it's okay let's do the soccer um it's not reversed necessarily um, yeah. which i think is ultimately a good thing right yeah no, no uh, at the oh. end of the day that's that's the you know that's that's the most important thing in terms of uh, yeah. getting getting uh, getting a degree and kind of moving on, I think I think you have to find mm-hmm. a place that you're going to be happy with uh, with or yeah. with the soccer piece or without the soccer piece. So, yeah, yeah. Hey, and and you know, just again, I think it's just the nature of your of the schools, and then the nature of the UAA, and it's not a local. You ain't driving thirty minutes to play. You know. 
someone. I mean, it's a lot of work. Like, so much, can you just talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you might face because of that? I mean, like I said, I think you go up, you go up to, you know, you go to Chicago, you go to, I mean, I think you're pretty much everywhere. Maybe far west coast? No. Uh, not this year, no, no. Our, yeah, our UAA yeah. consists. So we play. Uh, we play obviously in Chicago, um, University of Chicago, uh, Wash U in St. Louis, um, uh, Brandeis in Boston, NYU in, in New York City, uh, Rochester, yeah. University of Rochester um, in New York, Carnegie Mellons in Pittsburgh. You know, Case Case yeah. Western Reserves in Cleveland. So, um, you know, we we kind of right. it's, it's definitely wide widespread geographically, and I think. Um, uh, honestly, for us, like I, I, the greatest challenge, I mean, for us, obviously, is the, is the opponents, right? They're, everybody, I think, yeah. top to bottom, I think it's probably the most competitive league in, in, in Division Three. I think NESCAC, no question, is mm. a very, very good top end. But I think if you look at the bottom, maybe of the UA and the bottom of the NESCAC, um, I think there's maybe a yeah. little bit of a difference. But that, like I said, that's probably just maybe my biased opinion. Um, right. But, uh, you know, I, I think outside of that, certainly, certainly the travel uh, is 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 a lot different than maybe a kind of a normal Division three college soccer experience. And uh, the route, mm-hmm. the route is like our guys, our our players are treated very much like professionals. Like we we have flights, we do catered meals, we stay in nice hotels. And we're fortunate every every game mm-hmm. is in a kind of a pretty cool city, so that's uh, kind of unique during the season to be able to uh, to visit and travel. And uh, you know, we we do the best we can to kind of manage that so the players feel you know comfortable confident and, and kind of the expectation is to to perform um when we yeah. so we do everything we can to kind of put you, them in a position to be uh, to be successful don't tell me you're fly on chartered flights no, it's not, like we'd have to end this conversation because <laughs> not, not 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 quite uh, not quite charter flights <laughs> yeah. um let me ask you've been around for a while, you played at a high level. Like I said, you've been over to, to Germany. And, and just from your perspective, do you, do you notice a change in players? Have they gotten better since you were playing? Have they Are they different? Are they more physical? Are they more technical? Uh, I think uh, that's a great question. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's... I think it's all relative, really. I think um, I, I will say I do think the entirety of the kind of the player pool is much much deeper now than maybe it was when when I used to play. There was like kind of the the serious group of players maybe at the top end of the kind of the player pool, um, mm-hmm. and you know I, I think now I would just say that's probably probably a lot deeper. I think in terms of like. Um, the ability, I, I think there's better coaching now than probably there used to be. Um, so I think kids are, are coming in maybe a little bit cleaner technically, a little bit maybe more adaptable. Um, uh, but in terms of like quality, I think it's probably still it's still pretty relative. Like the, like the best kids aren't playing in college soccer coming out of high school, uh, whereas maybe in the past yeah. they, they used to. So uh, I don't know. It's, it's – mm-hmm. Uh, that's a great question. I, I don't know. Maybe you have the best answer, but that's uh, that's kind of where I feel. I, yeah. I definitely think kids are, are are probably cleaner. I think the pool is deeper. Um, I think they're probably a little yeah. bit more savvy um, nowadays. Yeah. yeah, it's just an interesting. They're definitely better. I mean, I watch the games in this fall. I watch so many games. Like I, I, I mean, it looks nothing like the eighties. Yeah. You know, they don't play on mud, first of all, right? Like in October, it's not a muddy field. It's an actual field, right? So, um, and, and this is another one I, I thought about, and especially these higher academic schools, I'm not sure a, a little bit of, of, of these, of those programs. I don't know if Emory's the same, you know, the guy, the, the players take care of themselves and they know how to, auto police uh, regulate lead their themselves just because of the nature of the student that comes on board so do, do you have a, a specific leadership team or is there are can you be a little bit more hands-off because they are tend to be more on the discipline side or yeah no i think i think um um certainly 
I, I think uh, a luxury. I, I don't know. I don't want to say like it's a luxury, but it's um, um, it's certainly a little bit different um, for I would say probably academic schools in terms of the nature. Like there's still challenges, just like any school. Certain benefits and certain challenges, and every every everywhere looks a little bit different. I think for us, uh, we certainly do. Um, I think year to year and probably season to season, kind of how we uh, what we do with kind of our our, our leaders. Uh, looks a, maybe a little bit different just in terms of the personnel and who they are and um, kind of what, what maybe the team needs and, and where the group is at, um, whether we're doing like a, you know, certainly weekly meetings, but whether we do, uh, you know, we'll go through like mm-hmm. read-throughs or uh, going through various books or just kind of like, um, you know, like uh, examples of them kind of going through like, okay, how would you, you know, deal with this kind of situation and kind of uh, talking with them as a group. Every every season looks a little bit different in terms of what they need and what the team needs. So, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I think it's it's obviously really critical too in terms of developing the, the kind of the next group and leader. So maybe even though you, you aren't wearing the armband, you know, having having a positive group of leaders that are all in the, all in the bus and taking the team in the right direction, mm-hmm. I think is really, really critical to uh, building kind of sustained success year in and year out. Uh, so mm-hmm. ha- having, having kind of a group of those guys, whether, you know, like I said, some, whether they're seniors or whether they're juniors or freshmen, whoever, whoever it might be um, to me, it doesn't, that doesn't really matter. But uh, you know, certainly I think having assertive quality people that are totally bought in, that's important yeah. for any any kind of success and wherever you're at. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're an extension of you, right? That's why I, that's why I sort of got into that. And, and to what we were saying earlier, I think those guys end up being the ones who maintain the continuity of what you're trying to build, and because they they have such a st- personal stake. Yeah. In no, it. absolutely, absolutely. And, and 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 you know, in a lot of ways, especially for like a new player, you know. It, there's no question like it can be intimidating maybe for them to, um, you know, have, have some demands from a coach or from a captain or from some kind of senior, but maybe uh, can be a little bit more relatable to somebody that they feel maybe more comfortable with, even though the information might be the exact same, it could, it, something might click with that, with that individual player. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, every yeah. avenue that you can exhaust to be find success and do things the right way, I think is, is yeah. important. So, yeah. Hey, do you, do, I guess the other thing here is how do you manage the, okay, so you travel a lot just by necessity because of the conference, the UAA, you're, you're a, a high academic school. Like, how do you, how do you manage the academic piece of that in the program and the demands of the program itself like do you do you i I don't know like do you do you have certain expectations that they're going to join a study group or you know things like that yeah no it's um it's certainly very unique i think it's 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 very different from maybe my my college experience uh, in terms of the academic nature (laughs) uh I, I, I'll be honest with you. I think if we, if I did like a regulated or mandatory study hall for the guys, I, I don't know how much like success that would be. Um, I think it's it's kind yeah. of interesting. I think in a lot of ways, the rigor of, of uh, at our school is 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 in the admissions. I feel like once uh, once mm-hmm. our once our guys are in and, and are admitted, I, I think they flourish and they have a lot of success. So. Um, in some ways, maybe the admission process can be more rigorous than maybe the, the curriculum, if that if that kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. I think uh, um, certain certainly when we're on the road and we're traveling, like it's not it's not easy. Like players are still expected to do all the work that they normally would. Like they might they're excused from class if, if they're on a game, but um, you know I think it's definitely a balance. I think you might have some environments where uh, you know your team is traveling. And, uh, uh, you know, there's maybe one or two kids that are in the, maybe in the lobby of the hotel getting some work done um, in kind of the downtime or after a meal or something like that. And for us, that's, that's kind of the norm for most of the team, like almost everybody's in the lobby, uh, whether yeah. they're kind of within their study groups or, uh, you know, class by class or by major, like, they, uh, or their roommate, like it's, yeah. that's kind of the norm. It's not, it's not weird for me to be, um, you know, going out for a little walk uh, after dinner and I come back and, you know, we've got 
10 or 12 or 13 players and kind of in the hotel lobby uh, studying and studying. studying. Yeah. 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 All right. But another thing, like just the balance yeah. of it all. Like, how do you, how do you to be honest, it? like a lot of the kids too, like a, a lot of them, uh, no matter where you go, uh, time management and, and kind of becoming a man and figuring out your time and how you're going to utilize yeah. your day. Uh, it's, it's kind of forced upon them because, um, you know, with soccer piece and being able to get to bed early enough so they can, you know, get enough rest and eating and everything else. Like they kind of, they kind of already know what they have to do to get all the work done mm. because, um, it's, if they're expected to perform at practice, um, they, they have to get to sleep. So, you know, I think, I think yeah, they're already yeah. pretty driven yeah. and pretty good in terms of managing their time, uh, on the academic side of things yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, Hey, so overtime changes for this upcoming year. You're in a battle, battle every game, even within conference. Do you have any thoughts on the on getting rid of OT? And and then probably the second part to that question, which is the one that intrigues me. Do those changes are they going to change the way you manage a game? Let's say in the last twenty or 15, fifteen twenty minutes. Because you know you don't have more than, than yeah. the nine. Yeah, no, I think uh, uh, so. We we I think we had like nine or ten games last fall that went into overtime or double overtime. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I think maybe we have a little bit more of a unique perspective in terms of like our, our coaching staff. <laughs> uh, obviously, like I understand the the kind of the concept of. You know, we, we want to limit time, I think, from a, like an administrative standpoint and staffing and everything else. You know, it's a no brainer um, pr protecting the players, limiting, you know, their time. Um, I, yeah. I think one of the things that kind of make makes college soccer unique is, is the like the golden goal. Like that's fun. And I think some of their greatest college yeah. you know, memories are kind of from games like that, like heartbreak, but also, in, you know, enthusiasm. So yeah. uh, I, I'll be honest, like I. I I think we're looking at uh, a larger issue in terms of like protecting the players and keeping them safe in terms of like managing time and games. Uh, I think we're, it's kind of a band aid on a, a bigger wound, so to speak. Uh, this is just my opinion. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I do, I'll be honest. I, I don't know how much in favor of the overtime I, I am. I think if we want to solve the mm -hmm. problem. I think there's a lot better ways in terms of, uh, maybe balancing out the schedule, extending the season a week or two. Um, I think there's a lot of different ways. I mean, one of the big pushes that we've been doing in terms, just in terms of our conference in the UAA has been trying to move to single single game weekends. So instead of traveling and playing two games on you know, Friday mm -hmm. and Sunday, um, trying to make that so you're just playing one game um, on on the weekend. And we start mm -hmm. we start the conference season a week earlier. And then we utilize there's one natural break in the UA that we, you know, play one of the games there and, and so that eliminates one of the double weekends. So, um, yeah. I think there's no question in terms of the science and everything else. I think, like I said, I think there's better ways to do it. Um, I, I totally understand it. I get it. Um, I definitely think it's going to affect, you know, looking at like rankings and especially like the end of the year when you're looking like in region, comparing teams is going to put a huge emphasis on, on your like yeah. SOS strength of schedule. So yeah. uh, in terms of like how we look at it, um, I'm not sure uh, it changes too much. Like we, we go into every game. We want to win every game. We're going to go for a win. And um, I think, you know, outside of like, like we said, like those top like 10 or 12 or 15 teams that are really, really good and have the depth and can, can, um, uh, you know, consider themselves like the elite elite. I certainly think there's going to be teams that maybe mm -hmm. play for more, maybe a draw or play for a tie. And maybe that does affect how they go about it. Um, I know if, if we're going into the last 10 minutes of any game against anybody, uh, we're going to, we're going to go for a win. I think if, if you look at our record, like we, like I said, we had nine or 10 ties last season. Uh, five of them ended up as draws. I think we lost four or three or four of them and we won two of them. So, uh, we came out maybe on the wrong side of like that, but I think you gotta go, you gotta go for a win. Like nobody wants to, uh, I, I don't, yeah. it's, it's hard to motivate a team. I think to, Hey, let's just hang on. Like that's, I, I think that's asking for um, yeah, yeah, a disaster. Yeah. You want to go, you, you know, 
we want to win. Everybody wants to win. That's what we that's what we're here for. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I think our players know uh, I, kind of what we're going to do. I don't. I don't think it's going to change maybe um, us personally, but um, I do think that could have a huge impact on mm-hmm. how other teams may play. Um, and certainly, it's going to. It's certainly going to have yeah. a, a crazy impact come next October of those last three regional rankings when they come out. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be a lot of teams that are saying that like you may they may be yeah. five two and five. And I think the strength of schedule yeah. is going to differentiate probably teams that are maybe very similar in terms of yeah. what their record looks like. Yeah. I, I've been saying like, yeah, like you, I, I think that's just a peripheral change, you know, like I get it. And I, but, but I'm thinking like, I've been saying, why don't you just give an extra week, just five, five, six extra days at the front end or the back end of the schedule. And keep the number of games the same. Right. You like know? that keep the number of games the same. You basically you're you you basically bought bought yourself two more one game a week. You know, one game a week in a, in the season and you still preserve your like week break or whatever you, yeah. you end up having. I mean, two weeks would be ideal, right? You start, let's say, the second week in August, and now now you're able to start the second week in August, and you go, yeah, so wherever you add them. But you, that would just, to me, that, that answers it. And like, you keep the OT and all that stuff. Because, yeah, you're right. There is yeah. a certain excitement to it, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I'm I'm glad I'm not making those decisions, though, because I'd probably get a lot of scorn for all the things that I would change. And who knows, but, you know, there's, um, I'm sure there's other issues too that we, we haven't thought about. There's a, there's obviously a cost involved to bring yeah. in your teams and the season early. And that, yeah. that has an impact on, in terms of the school. So I, yeah. I think um, certainly it's not always up to the soccer people to make those decisions. And, uh, you know, yeah, could be, maybe yeah, that's yeah. probably a good thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that, that I agree. Like I said, I always say, you know, it's easy from these four walls right now to come up with these harebrained things. Like, hey, two weeks. And meanwhile, there's some accounting, you know, guy in a in the finance office of the school doing some numbers. And it's like, that's going to cost us across all athletics, you know, another million dollars or something just for those two weeks. Like, well, I don't know. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to write that check. So, um, so, so when do your, I mean, we're right around the corner. Um, like when do your, when do your players report? When do they, when do you start? Um, yeah, so our guys, um, they're, they're going to be coming in next week. So the 17th is they'll move in. Uh, the 18th, we'll do kind of our, all of our, our admin stuff meetings, um, uh, kind of get kind of squared away, uh, in terms of, uh, paperwork and everything mm-hmm. else. And, you know, physicals and impact testing, concussion stuff. So they, they, they'll do that, all that on that Thursday. And then, uh, we hit the ground running on that, uh, that Friday will be our, our first, uh, down the field. So pretty, pretty quick. Mm-hmm. This is usually where I throw in. Uh, this is where I usually throw in the repeated joke where I'm, you know, I'm waiting for acceptance so I can yeah, show up at practice. I, um, but unfortunately, I don't think I have the academic stature to make em- and get into Emory, so I ain't showing up to preseason. So. There might be like a wait list thing for you. I'll, I'll, I'll have to go and double check. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The special consideration list, right? Special consideration over there. <laughs> so, um, you know, what does your that, that first day of practice? What do you like to do? What do you? How do you jump into it? Right? And I know there's a lot of folks have yeah. different ideas about that. Do you yeah, like no, to play? I, I, think, uh, I feel pretty pretty good about kind of the way kind of preseason looks for us. I, I usually it's it's my favorite time of year to be totally honest with you, like getting together everybody before mm-hmm. any of the students um, as a team, no classes, like they kind of can just think about soccer for a little while. A lot of them are coming off maybe summer, in, summer internships and maybe some of the younger guys are playing, uh, you know, summer ball or USL two. Um, so I think for us getting kind of getting everybody mm-hmm. back kind of on the same wavelength and grind, I think it's, it's, it's fantastic um, for us. Um, 
I'll be honest, like uh, I, I, we used to be in a position where we would do like kind of fitness testing. And uh, I think there was much more of a heavy em- emphasis on, uh, you know, fitness coming in, coming back. And I think we've, we, we, we've kind of progressed mm-hmm. out of that. I'll be honest, like I, I don't find as much value in terms of the, the actual like fitness testing um, as we used to. I, th- I think mm-hmm. uh, day one for us in the morning. Uh, we'll go down to kind of our, our lower fields and practice fields, and we'll do a lot of tech, a lot of technical, and you know that opening that first kind of weekend, um, a lot of defending stuff. So one v ones, two v twos, three v twos. Like I said, heavy technical emphasis in terms of where we're at. Um, I think if, mm-hmm. if you were to spend, you know, two hours just doing fitness stuff, or maybe an hour just trying to get your fitness level back and testing everybody. That, that's time wasted that you can be using so much like the time is already limited in terms of uh, what we're allowed for preseason. So uh, I think there needs to be elements of fitness and everything. I think there needs to be elements of technical stuff and everything that we're doing elements of, um, you know, mm. uh, uh, tactics. So I, I think, I think you have to, you have to design sessions that look like the game, but are also demanding of in, in terms of a, every component, not just maybe focusing on, on one or the yeah. other. So, um, like I said, for us, we we take a lot of pride in terms of our team defensively. Um, the players, the the guys take take pride in that. I, I think it's it's, it's a really important uh, to kind of set a good foundation, um, and then from there we you know mm-hmm. we 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 go from there. But uh, so that that's in the morning. It's like I said, defending, um, and then in the, in the evening uh, session uh, we'll play just play 11s. Uh, usually we'll try to put all the new guys together. We'll try to come up with some kind of crazy thing where we get all the new guys on one team and, 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 and let them, let them go and kind of throw them to the wolves a little bit, so to speak. But uh, they're excited. Everyone wants to yeah. play. Everyone wants to do well. And to be honest with you, like there's probably no better fitness than a, a fast competitive 11 v 11 game uh, in terms of getting, getting you, getting yeah, your yeah. lungs back. So. Yeah. I was telling somebody a couple of weeks ago, like, I think, the problem with doing fitness in preseason is that the body is already taking abuse because of the, you know, that no one's going to be used to training every day for two weeks or whatever the, the, the time schedule is. And so if you throw in fitness on top of that, you're, I think you just stand the chance of hurting guys. Right. Like guys will break. Like it just, cause yeah, yeah. No, and and, and and there's certainly yeah. there's there's you know I, I'd like to think for a majority of our players uh, you know fitness like there's not a lot of guys using preseason to to get in shape like they're already they're they're hopefully already in good shape. Yeah, there's yeah. probably a few guys that yeah. maybe aren't in the best or aren't game fit, so trying to sharpen them up. Yeah. Um, you know that's the challenge. But I, I I don't find the I don't find the value of making everybody do something when it may be only really you need, you know, yeah. it's needed for a couple. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think there was certainly a time uh, yeah. I can think back when I was an assistant coach and there was, we'd, we'd have like six guys that were fit and the rest were probably not, not ready yet. Um, yeah, yeah. I think, I think as a program, it's and the expectation and the, the players know, like they, they know when they're fit and when they're not. So, um, Anyway, I I, I think yeah. there's little, there's lots of different ways to go about it and, and kind of ways to view it, but um, that's that's yeah. kind of I would say my take on it. I, I I also think that this you, to to your point earlier about how you said you thought the pool was deeper. I think the definitely of soccer players of all sort of levels, like there's a more serious approach to the game than there ever was like it's not it's not playground stuff anymore right and and i think the guys i think guys and gals like understand that going into preseason one of the requirements is to be in shape and you better be ready to play because what's going to differentiate a decision between one player and another could come down to being fit Right, and, yeah. I, and, and I think I, they understand I mean, even, that. Even for me, the best advice I was given as a coming out of high school, getting ready for my first year in college, was be in the best shape of your life. You're going to already have enough things to try to sort through in terms of a new mm. program, new team. Like <laughs> trying to figure out where you know where do you do your laundry? How long do I leave it in? 
you know, where, where, what's my mail yeah. code? Like there, there's, you know, I'm trying to find a, the best toilet on campus. Like there's a million things I'm trying to sort through in preseason, uh, <laughs> soccer, should, you know, let's try to make that the easiest thing. And certainly if you're trying to get in shape, yeah. you're already going to be behind. So I, I think, um, yeah. you know, if, if you can control yeah, it, yeah. that's one thing I think that you can control in terms of your fitness like that, that, that shouldn't be the question. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, I think I got this right. Like, I'm just looking to confirm that I, I counted right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I, you, you had 11 players. It looks like maybe graduating. This is all a funk, right? Because of the whole COVID thing. And I get the, so some of these guys might be staying. Um, you're, all region players are supposedly graduating like and again you guys are special so i don't whether they're staying or not i mean that would be interesting to know but like do you, do you have expectations for your upperclassmen to sort of like step into any sort of leadership void that, uh that yeah that no 100 uh, percent. i think um uh, all those guys, I think uh, Jack Hudson, Max Melman, and Vernon, those those guys were exceptional yeah. players for us and leaders for us, and they were, you know, key, key figures. Um, I also think um, going into next season, uh, uh, trying to find re replacing those guys is, uh, you know, that's that's what a huge part of our spring season um, was kind of figuring it out. Uh, we, we have, mm -hmm. you know, three captains, uh, one fifth year and, and two kind of, I would say natural seniors. Um, Alejandro, uh, Gomez is, uh, uh going to be a fourth year. He's senior. He's kind of like a playmaker for us. Um, he's been a, you know, kind of a, a you know, mm -hmm. one of our more attacking dynamic players over the past three or four years. So, um, him and then Cole Hendricks, uh, who's, uh, uh, outside back for us. Um, uh, those guys are kind of natural natural leaders they kind of led the group all spring um and then uh, we have another fifth year will tishy who's been a kind of a figurehead for the uh our midfield uh who's going to be coming back for for a fifth year so those will be kind of mm. our captains um but even even outside of that like yeah. we have a class of 12 seniors and one fifth year coming in the fall so that like it, it's mm. a lot of we spend a, so much time in terms of like looking at our calendar right and and what does the year look like in terms of growth as a program and, and our calendar starts in january and you know those guys that they were great uh, that was last season and we got to start new and and so um you know i think it's for us it's more of like we have some really 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 good players that we couldn't get on the field because uh, of some excellent fifth years last year and so now it's, it's kind of like a maybe a coming out party mm -hmm. for for some guys that maybe haven't gotten all the headlines but mm -hmm. they're you know, we have some absolute studs, so um, I'm looking forward to it. It's, we're just kind of reloading, and it's a new opportunity, new, new, uh, certainly new challenges. But like, like mm -hmm. we said, I think with every obstacle and challenge, can be looked at as an opportunity for some as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. Again, just sort of that transition. I always like that. Trying to figure out how do you create fill a void. Yeah, no, right? I, I think I think if you're doing it right, right too, like, um, yeah, okay, maybe there's a hole or maybe there's a, a player that's outgoing. Uh, if you, I think if you're a good coach and you've kind of gone through the process, like you can you can replace that pretty easily. Like you're prepared for that. It's not like you got to go out and find a brand new player to to fill a hole that you know that yeah. you've already maybe got somebody kind of lined up. So because you know any anything can happen. So. Um, I, I think good programs that like, you know, yeah, I think yeah. you probably mentioned it in some of your own, you're, you're really just reloading. Um, you're wrong. Yeah. 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 I think you get to a level. It's definitely reload, right? That's that to me is like that first hurdle is, can you get to a high enough standard and then just sort of reload from there until you can get to the next level and then you reload from there and then you're sort of in that elite. And then at that point, I said top 15, anything once, once you get it's top 20, anything. Yeah. Happens. Once you got, once you're you in like know, a position to, uh, to, yeah. to be in the national tournament and you can kind of get through that first weekend, like literally from the sweet 16 yep. in like any, like just things are all good. Like it's, and anything it's wild, any, so. yeah yep it, it ends up being that it ends up being that proverbial you know one game that's all you're playing is one game and every game is yeah. can something can happen so 
Hey, and um, maybe you could talk a little bit about your incoming freshmen and and do you do you have expectations that some of those guys are going to be could be key contributors, right? Which is doesn't so much happen anymore, right? Like you, there are there are cases where that's true, but find like again because so many guys have gotten so serious about the game that freshmen end up being being the more traditional freshmen of yeah yeah no I, I, great question i think time. um uh, i think going going through the process all of our kind of like the recruited guys that are coming in incoming players like we've already seen them and we we kind of know what they're capable of um but at, at any time like in a new environment with our group any literally anything could happen like we, we we wouldn't bring them in if we didn't think they could compete and get on the field and be uh you know contribute like otherwise they they wouldn't have, they wouldn't be on the roster if we didn't think they they could do that immediately whether whether that happens i think comes down to like a variety of factors certainly it can happen i'm not eliminating it like the best the best 10 guys are going to get on the field like that's um whether they're freshmen whomever and it's certainly possible um but we also understand that, like, like there's there's a lot on their plate to come into a new environment. Um, sometimes it can be a refreshing thing, right? There's no pressure. That's like, hey, and, and guys get confident and they can have a lot of success, and then they're they're off and flying. Um, some guys it takes two weeks to get there. Some guys it might not be two weeks. Some it might be you know two semesters before they start to really feel confident and um, understanding kind of their role in the system. So I, I think um, um, certainly we know that they're capable and uh, trust that they they could do the job um at the end of the day it's going to be up to them to 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 earn it and knowing that it's it's not easy um and there's a there's a lot of competition um we but i i think for us like we know they're good players we know what they're capable of uh, when that when that shows um uh, that that's the part that if you if you can figure that out i'd probably buy uh i'd probably buy that book i don't know yet but uh some guys, some guys, like I said, some guys figure it out in preseason. Some, some <laughs> takes a little while, a little while. Or so. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. All right, so let's lay it out there. This is being recorded. I'm gonna hold you to it. What are your expectations for this fall? Like, what what do you ex- of the team that you have and what you know? What what sort of expectations yeah, so for, for us, do you have? Um, it, uh, it's the same and as you, kind of it has been the past few years. Like, I, for us, we we want to be uh, UAA champions, and uh, I think that's uh, that's it's been our goal for you know the few years that I've been at at Emory. Uh, we certainly, in terms of the national stage, we you know I think we want to be in a position to compete for a national championship. So I think in order to do that, you got to be in a position to get into the tournament. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to, to win, win the conference. So um, there's certainly a few other routes, um, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, it, for us, it, it hasn't changed in the last few years. I don't think it'll change uh, in the next few years. Uh, that's, 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 that's kind of where we're at. We want to be looked at as one of the, kind of the, those elite teams. And I think we're capable in terms of, uh, the resources, the players that we have, the team that we have, uh, everything else. So we we, we feel like that's where we kind of should be and want to be. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, I I, I think uh, every every team says that uh, and wants to do that. Uh, I, I I realistically think that uh, I think our, we can do it. I think our, that's what our most importantly our, our players want. So. I think it's you know it's very easy to be a kind of a crazy coach and going off and saying you want to do all these things, but unless your unless your team actually believes it and wants it and, and has a passion and uh, wants to get that wants to get that done, um, uh, it's 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 can be difficult. So, I, I mean, I'm really I, I I appreciate that you gotta uh, that's the that's the big right like. You always want to win your your conference tournament. You you want to be on top, and I'm I'm trying to you know I'm just sort of looking at like every one of the teams in the conference could yeah. legitimately be <laughs> but, right. Good. Like I mean that's the crazy part. I keep like you said. I guess that's a great point about the NESCAC, which I never thought right because they got you know the. The standards, Hammers, Tufts, now Khan, like these great, great programs that 
sort of have dominated. But you do forget, like, the, there's, you know, there's that, the bottom end of that. And they're still good because they compete in such a, so, but I'm looking at, at the UAA and, I mean, it's like, yeah, pick no, your poison as to who I'll you play. I'll be honest, play, too, like, you know? the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the most difficult can, things, too, you, is like, no matter, no matter what kind of a season you're doing, like, any, every UAA game is an opportunity to kind of like change your route, like the last couple of weeks. So it could be like for, for us, for example, it's like late October, yeah. maybe we're on the road and we're playing Brandeis and NYU and it's one weekend and you're in Boston yeah. and on a Friday night and then you got a Sunday in New York city. And it just so happens to be like right around midterms and guys are getting yeah. jobs and all these other, other crazy things like job yeah. offers. So there's, it's, you yeah, know, and it's yeah. also like okay, so like the second week of regional rankings, like we gotta. So for us, like all those league games count yeah, as yeah. region <laughs> games for us. So it's uh, you know the kids. Yeah. They, they, there's so much going on in their bubble on those weekends that literally it it's already kind of crazy. But oh my God. Um, uh, you know, there's there's a lot more non soccer things that kind of make it crazy too. That um, you know. It's, it's, sure. It's, absolutely. It's a challenge. And so, so no matter where I'm you're sure, at, even absolutely. if you're maybe towards the bottom of the peak, like you're maybe only a game or two back, and there's only two games left. So they're like not yeah. having a conference tournament yeah. at the end of the year for the UAA. Certainly unique, but it just puts that much more. Like yeah. it sounds cliche, but like every game is kind of a final, right? It's like every game is, is a league game. It's an important yeah. league game. Yeah. It's an opportunity. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, you, you go on that weekend and you go, you take those two games and suddenly you could be an eighth yeah. spot and now you're suddenly at third, <laughs> you know, like just a, just that one weekend. Right. And it just I mean, that's how remarkable that change can be. And if you're you're on top of the heap and you drop two, sure. you're got, you're you're down like you yeah. got passed by four teams. Yeah, that's. Wow. I mean, and look, you know, hey, nice Atlanta weather, lovely, you know, October, fall. Hey, let's go to Rochester at the end of October. Like, good luck with that. I don't even want to go to Rochester at the end of October. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, you um, could, I'm never going to say anything bad you know? about any school, like, but uh, it's definitely, I mean, so for <laughs> no, us, no. Rochester is our travel partner. Uh, within the UAA. So if a team has a double, they're playing, uh -huh. they're coming to Atlanta and then they're going to Rochester, like, or they're going to Rochester and then coming to Atlanta. So uh, even between that, like that's a, that's yeah. a flight between those two schools. Whereas for example, if we're playing, it's like wash you in St. Louis and Chicago are travel partners. So you fly in and maybe take a bus or for us, like Brandeis yeah. and NYU, like that's a bus trip in yeah. between, but our travel partners a flight. So it's, um, yeah. it's, it's, sometimes can be very shocking for teams maybe going to rochester first it's cool it's kind of nice on turf <laughs> and then they're yeah and then, they're and then they're sweating their on the sideline before the like... game because uh, it's uh, a little bit hotter so. <laughs> oh lord oh i love that oh, i just that gives me the giggles you know like that's it that's it like this isn't this is the realities of 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 some of this stuff, right? You play in a country as large as the U.S. Like it's not a, you're going to different climates. You might as well go to Alaska for a game, you know, or someplace northern Canada. <laughs> um, okay, so I mean, I've been asking this question. I think I'm going to drop it. You might do my last test. If you answer the way I think you're going to answer, then I'm just not going to do ask anymore. But are there any particular games that you have circled in a red Sharpie? <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I think for us, the reality is like that our first game, we're playing uh, Covenant. Um, who is, a you know, they went to the, they beat Denison in the first round last year. Um, uh, so there's, you know, NCAA team, second yeah. round. We, we played them in our opener in 2021 and and of course we tied uh that game too so uh obviously the like that's 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 what our focus is on in, in terms of like that that first game um uh i think mm -hmm. uh for us like regional opponents and teams that we play kind of year in and year out i think uh kind of like i think 
Emory and WNL or Washington Lee, that's kind of developed into a little bit of a regional rivalry. They, mm-hmm. you know, they've, they've been the number one team the last few years in terms of our region. Um, so I think they're not very good. We, we, we've, we've been, we play so them every, good. you know, every yeah. year, the last, last four or five years. So, um, good games again we played them last year and we tied them so it's uh every you know they're they're they're, they're so good i think another yeah. kind of a local rivalry for us is, is oglethorpe who um i think can be very very hot and very cold like they're they're very mm. i would say um can be uh can always cause fits almost no matter what just because they're very technical they like to keep the ball there um you know they're mm-hmm. a very difficult team to play, uh, play against. So and and they're ten minutes down the down the street from us. So mm-hmm. um, I would say those are kind of like more maybe maybe more regional opponents. Yeah. Every every conference game for us is a war. Um, everybody hates us. We have a target on our back. Like everybody wants to beat us. We're getting yeah. everybody's best game. It feels like so. <laughs> um, it's, it's hard to say. Like uh, you know, if you want to be one of those kind of top elite type programs like you're prepared to everybody everybody has you maybe you circled on their schedule yeah. if that makes sense so yeah. yeah yeah that's funny everyone hates you guys <laughs> i did not know that but hey <laughs> um that's why i love by the way just first of all you you don't you don't get to the top of the mountain by playing easy yeah. games like that never ha- that doesn't work um and then and then that's why i love messiah's they have a saying on their badge it says as iron sharpens iron because that is true like you only get better by playing better right like playing better teams playing it and and i look at your conference and i'm like man if you win the uaa that says a lot about how good you are, right? And how, you know, you're somehow managing yeah, to get the results that you need to get the results. Yeah, there's no question. I think, against I think really you know, for me, opponents. having, you know, having been, had a chance to be on a few of like kind of like rankings committees and, um, you know, looking at kind of the selection and, and how teams are getting in, I, I think there's going to be uh, so much more of an importance in terms of your strength of schedule and who you're playing and how, how are they doing your opponents opponents uh, throughout the year. Mm-hmm. And they're like scheduling is such, mm-hmm. it's going to be kind of a science, but it's, it's an art to it too, a little bit in terms of who you're playing in your non-conference. And I think what you're going to find is like the, the, the kind of upper echelon of teams are going to play each other because it's, it's mutually beneficial. Like they, they know these are going to be good games. They're going to do well. Yeah. We're going to do well. This is going to be a competitive game. Yeah. Like there's a benefit. Um, then there's going to be kind of the next tier of teams that maybe aren't in that group, but are trying to get good games. Um, but maybe because of whatever could be cost, could be resources, travel, whatever, they, they're not able to play all of the best teams all the time. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think, you know, the more it goes down this route, like there's going to be a little mm-hmm. bit of a kind of a separation of like the best and then kind of the rest. Um, and then there's going to be people at the yeah. bottom that it doesn't matter. Like we're just going to play whoever we yeah. can and, we're just going to use the, maybe our conference tournament as a route to. Yeah. That's going to be that's going to be our route. That's that that's the route for us. So um, that's a route. It, it's definitely yeah. it's definitely unique. And then <laughs> you throw in the whole ties yeah. on top of this too. Um, and so two, two teams are going to be two teams are going to be, <laughs> like be seven zero yeah. and seven. <laughs> and you know how do you differentiate that? Well, who yeah. who, who have you played? You know who have you beaten? Um, yeah. And so. Uh, that, you know, yeah. I, I think it, it's just going to be so much more important in terms of coaches that if you want to be a top elite type program, like you got to play this, you got to play other teams and uh, be prepared for that. Yeah. Yeah. I almost think that they, they're going to have to do something where there's going to have to be a point system, right? Like, it not, You know, like you do have to give points for wins and ties and, and you know, and maybe you're – and then you throw in some sort of strength of schedule, yeah. away wins or four it'll points. Be, it'll I don't be know pretty how, interesting. To, how to figure that out. But, um, but yeah, yeah, to your – yeah, yeah. And, and to, to your point that I thought that, that you made was really – it is true. Like the real the, – the top level teams – 
more and more you find, I'm looking at schedules, I'm like, this is not for the faint-hearted because you could go 0-4 to start your season because you're playing these great quality teams. And and it is by necessity because the re, the really qual, top, the, the top tier teams are all thinking there is no guarantee I can win the conference tournament. And so what's my other route? Strength of schedule. And so how do I get strength of that? I play the best teams I possibly can. And so there it's bare knuckle brawls, yeah. right? Like your whole season. Yeah, no, and then, like you said, smokes. like to get that, to the tournament. That is, right? That's kind of the other route. Yeah. And it's only going to happen for a few teams that – are good enough, have enough results mm. versus ranked and played a good schedule. And so yeah. um, I think uh, yeah. it, it's, it's, there's a, there's a, yeah. there's been a premium on those spots and, and on being, a, being, being an at large team is not, it's, it's really, really yeah. hard, really competitive. So, you know, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you're, and I mean this, I'm just, you know, you're not going to play Paul's College because Paul's College is, has been 0 for whatever for the last three years. Yeah. And really, I, I, you're I'll never going to play me, right? Because, yeah, because and, it's and, not and, worth your time and the risk yeah, is too no, high. It, not Even though that, we're super at, good. Okay, what do the resources look like for the school? Like, does it make sense for us to be able to go there? And, you know, maybe, it, maybe it's a two year deal where maybe we play at Paul's College yeah. and then Paul's College comes to us. And, um, I, I think the other piece of it too is as a staff, we're yeah. looking at not only that, like how good is that program, but also who, who are the opponents, who are they playing against and can, is that school going to play a competitive enough schedule yeah. so that their opponents, opponents, are they going to be able to get 10 or 12 wins schedule. against their yeah, opponents? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's, there, it's, uh, you know, it, like yeah, I said, it's yeah. kind of a science and it's kind of yeah. an art and it, it's, um, <laughs> it's gonna certainly, uh, I think you'll find, yeah. that, like in, yeah. in recent years, um, teams are challenging themselves, and the best are going to be probably playing against the other best. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely see that. Everyone has been mentioning that again because they're at least trying to give themselves a second opportunity to to make the 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 tournament and the only way to do that is with an at-large and how do you get an at-large you just sort of rock the strength of schedule so um let, let me ask you something especially going into the fall sort of what what is your what is your what's your what do you think your biggest challenge is for the team Forget the schedule, forget the opponents, because that's pretty tough. But um, how, how, like, I mean, do you have any concerns? Do you think, oh, I'm afraid, like, all of my engineering students are going to struggle because they're juniors and juniors is notoriously difficult? Like, it, do you have things like that that are on your mind? Like, yeah, man, no, if I, we I can think, avoid that, you know, we'll be, we'll be it's okay. always on our mind, like that. You know, how during an important, critical, I would say like time period in the season, which is usually around kind of, you know, Halloween, end of October, um, you know, in that kind of critical time mm-hmm. frame, uh, is, you know, how are we managing that? Is that, are there exams going on? Are kids, you know, are maybe some of your older players or seniors mm-hmm. looking at kind of job opportunities and how does that play into it for sure? Um, I think I'll, I'll be honest, like, I think that that's always going to be, part of it for anybody um i i think for us like as a team and maybe mm-hmm. more generally speaking i think um my question with us is you know i, I know we're going to be good against the best teams and the top teams and kids get up for it and we're going to be competitive um against ranked teams every time it's going to be kind of you know the old saying like you know can you get it done on a rainy cold tuesday at stoke so to speak so if you can, if you can, you know, can you take care of the business on those days, a midweek game, you maybe don't feel like it and you're on the road and it's kind of a bus trip and, yeah. you know, we, maybe, maybe we didn't get a catered yeah. meal this, this game and how, you know, so, um, I think every game yeah. has such a huge importance that you can't lose sight of it. Maybe if it isn't, you're not playing a top ranked team. 